Hey everyone, it's Elaine, and welcome back to my channel. Two and three videos ago, I showed you these two journals. If you remember, I had told you that I had gone off for a long weekend with some friends, and my goal was to finish journals that I had started. We all do it. We start something, we walk away from it, it kind of gets to us a little bit, we leave it for a while, and maybe one day. Well, that's what happened. So go back two, three videos if you haven't seen it, and I do a quick flip through of both of these. Then, while I was away, let me put these to the side. While I was away, I actually started another one. Now, you also, if you've watched my videos, you know I have a lot of upholstery fabric. And the one thing about upholstery fabric is, for the most part, you never get two pieces the same. I really liked this. It was, a, I don't know, I like the weave of it, I like the print of it. And as you can see, the journal I did is somewhat of a chunky monkey. Yep, it is. But... It is what it is, and what I decided to do was, I made this, well, I got this basket, it's a cloth basket, so it doesn't have any holes and stuff in it, so every little giblet of stray stuff I had, I threw in that basket. My intentions were, between those three journals, to use all of it. Well, of course, you don't end up using all of it, but I did end up using the majority of it. And I was so proud of myself. You're going to see in this journal where some of it's, you know, it's stickers or whatever. And you know how it is. You have a sticker pack and you use all of them, but maybe one or two. And then there you have it. So anyhow, I used a lot of stuff. This plate I know is a bit unusual. And I basically had four colors of gray that I wanted to choose. And, of course, I chose that one. And what it is, I think, is like a hardy plank. Um, siding for houses and stuff. You know, I told you I've gotten a lot of construction samples through the years. And I like it. I thought it was rugged. And I thought it added another dimension and texture to the cover. The problem with it is, is because it is textured, I knew I couldn't stamp the word journal on it. I knew I couldn't use embossing powder because the stamp still wouldn't get down in the crevices. I only had one piece that color, so I needed to make it work. So I thought, you know what? You're going to handwrite in your journals and stuff anyway. You're going to doodle, draw, whatever. So why not just start with the cover? So that is my handwriting in for the word journal and I used a sharpie marker and my thinking was is that I could take the marker and get down in the crevices and I think I did pretty good overall there might be a couple places I need to touch up still but anyhow let's get started I'm going to do this kind of rapidly um, I will stop if there's something I want to share um, this was just an extra piece of the fabric my inside cover is a piece of gray velvet again it's also a furniture sample like these stickers, I've had these a long time. I think they came four up on a two-sided page. And um, you flip the one piece in so it stuck to itself in here. And then it made like a pocket. Had those a long time. And I finally used them. A lot of the stuff too, I don't even really remember where I picked it up. I do a bunch of retreats. And this is the kind of stuff people will go ahead and make ephemera. Now isn't that adorable? I imagine those are the Tim Holtz people up on some decoupage. And there I have a little tag. So I went through, like I said, and I pulled all my stray stuff together. This was on this paper. And it's just different pieces of fabric. And, and then an applique. And I put it on a page that I knew I wouldn't be able to write on. This was one I had done out of an old book page. This is a die that I believe came from Ellison long time ago and there was this store in South Carolina that was a stamp store it was great but unfortunately it closed I think it was called Eleanor's not positive about that but I think anyway she would let you use her dies if you bought the paper and you could punch as much as you want to and so this was a you know you, 
this is all one piece and then you fold back the two sided paper to do this. And like I said, I've had those a long time and that was gift wrap and then just some odds and ends again that I had. This was a digital and Microsoft had a glitch. So when you went to print out pictures, it did the top and the bottom of the page, but it wouldn't do the middle. So I said, I'm not wasting that, but I fixed the glitch. So all is good. Um, you know, they had whatever they called it to fix it. And, um, and I, I managed to figure it out by myself. I was impressed and I had done it two sided. So again, just some things that I've picked up some, um, scrapbook paper. You know, I do try to use miscellaneous paper the best I can. And again, you know, belly band. And this is something I got at one of the retreats. Again, one of my little collages on book paper. And uh, the other half to that digital. This is one of the things I really like to do. And I've probably told you this before. But I like making notepads. And what I do is I take a piece of paper and I fold it in half. That half I glue down so it stays permanent. But in the meantime... I have gotten my paper lined up, all different kinds of papers, and I will punch them through the top of this. Now the bottom, well, I guess, yeah, the bottom is punched too. I was thinking it wasn't, but I think it might be. And um, anyway, so then I perforate my paper, and I just have a, a cutter that has a perforation blade on it. And so you can actually, you know, tear this out. And then what happens is the pieces that you're left at the top can be your template if you want to replace your papers. So that's one of my favorite things. This was a class at one of the retreats that I hosted. And it's two envelopes. And not only do you have pockets here, but you also have pockets on the side. So I don't think I stuck anything in there. But there's one pocket there. There's one pocket there. There's... So this has, what, at least six pockets in it. Pretty cool, huh? And she had already coffee stained it and everything for us. This was a decoupage. And then this is um, a card that someone at one of the retreats gave. Isn't that cool? It's, it's um, it kind of looks like tissue paper and then with another paper on it, and then it was laminated. So you get really cool stuff. And then, um, and here's another one. And, you know, I wish I could give credit. Here's another one of those with the Ellison punch or die. Um, this was actually off of something um, that I had purchased. Um, I think she had done some flat paper flowers and I just decided to use it as a little side tuck. And there's the other half of it because it went on the plastic like that. So I just put it over the page. And then here's a little upper pocket. And then just some thin paper. And this was a, a form from work and I just printed a digital on top of it. This was a piece of paper advertising, I think, for a coloring book. And then I just put all kinds of little things in it. And, uh, and then here's just a piece of scrapbook paper that I embellished. And this was a page out of a book. And that tells you about that mushroom. And here we go, a doily. And again, I just added little embellishments here and there. Just basically so that there was something pretty much on every page. And I could use up all of the you know, the ephemera, the stickers, you know, whatever it was that I had put in that basket. And um, one lady had written or had stamped a bunch of quotes and then had punched them out or cut them out for us. So um, I used that in here. And again, you know, this is like junk mail and stuff. And then here's a digital from someone that I just did one sided. This paper right here feels kind of stout. Oh, I know why. Because this was... I think a master board and yeah and I was thinking that it might be is it stuck together have I done something wrong on this one nope this is a master board and um so it's kind of chunky in there I was trying to get to the other side of it and see what I did Yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not figuring this one out all of a sudden. But I can see the glue on it, so I glued it down. I must have just glued a piece of a master board onto that junk mail. It's been a few weeks, I'm sorry, probably about a month since I've actually done this. And uh, 
and you know how sometimes glue will stick to things that shouldn't. I think we're about halfway through, but you can see just use papers. And if you have some book pages, isn't that pretty with the digital up on top of it? I really liked it. And then just some book pages. And then I like to layer paper. That's a washi tape that someone gave. And this, I think, was um, a stationary, had stationery in it. And someone had made that um, for us. And so I just kind of tucked it in there. And here's another one of those laminated cards with some more of that telling you about the coloring book. And that was just a piece of crazy felt that I just didn't know what I'd ever do <laughs> with it. And so there it is. And then here's some, you know, funky little cards somebody gave. And I added some scrapbook paper. And a lot of it, you know, I do like to leave pages empty that then you can put your own... Um, you know, embellishment, or if you have some pictures you want to do. This was a little flippy thing that someone had made and um, gave it to us. So as you can see, a lot of it is stuff that I've, do you want to say, inherited, that was given as a gift. Um, that's one thing about crafters. They are usually very generous and um, like to share, especially when they, you know, definitely have a lot of something where they've sat and, and made a lot of something, and then they're like, okay, now I have a lot of that. What am I going to do with it? And uh, and that was one that someone had given. So let's see here. I think, uh, yeah, here's the other side to that, where it was this, that was probably the envelopes, and this was probably the stationary side. And then look at that tag that someone did. Now, isn't that cool? I really like it. I like the punched out corner on it and everything. So again and then that was just some scrapbook paper and then this is a digital i didn't do anything to the inside but it was a folder i think that's from um tsunami rose pretty sure about that and this is just a little file folder with a little envelope i tucked inside of it and then again just some more miscellaneous that's some dyed paper that i did and um that was probably using some old paint that I um, just do in boiling water to declump it. And then here's another one of my little notepads on um, some junk mail. And another paper ruffle. And then that's just some tissue that I had. And here's some playing cards. Someone had made this tag and um, it had a little pocket. So I decided to use that. And then this was something that I was practicing my embossing powder on and I thought well you know that's cute enough I'll just keep it and I'll stick it somewhere and there it is and this I think was a coaster and um, someone had given these little note cards and this is just a little strip from the bottom of the scrapbook paper that usually cut off I usually use those in the middle of paper ruffles or like there I did it on an edge um, this was this is wallpaper believe it or not textured wallpaper that comes white and then I had made a master board and, and just had cut pieces from it. And now this is a cabinet card that I actually made myself. I um, printed out the picture and then did it on some kind of um, not too heavy card stock. So that's actually a reproduction of something I had. I'm usually real careful about copying things. I just had to make sure they're old enough. And then here we go with another laminated card. And um, some more just miscellaneous things. Now here, this one is really cool. This is um, a card that someone had made, and it turned out to be an envelope, so you could hide some little things in there. And then this was a paper clip with, as you can see, some paper and a button and everything hanging on it. So I kind of just thought I'd put it all together in one spot. <clears throat> so there we go. There's another digital. And then this was a cellophane um, piece that someone had given, and it's got a little butterfly and some gauze. And then the tag um, just has this stamped on it and then embellished. And then it has some die cuts or some, you know, punches out of it. And let me get it back in there right. There we go. So that was a gift. And then here we go. This one I um, sewed onto the page and then a sticker on this side. This was me playing. I had this stamp and then I had this waxy stuff. Um, it's kind of like a clear embossing powder, and I wanted to give it a try. And I actually do like the way it feels on there. And I think if you bent it enough, yeah, it would probably crackle as well. And then that's the back side of it. I'm not sure how I like that, but um, 
that's okay. I mean, for, you know, my junk journal. And then here's just some more odds and ends. These were some ATC cards um, back in the day. This is a long time ago. I think this was an inchy one, uh, an inchy swap. And so I had put them on the copy machine. I forget what I was going to do with them, but I had a few of these. So I decided to put them in here. And there's another one of my little notepads and then some more miscellaneous paper and some more places to write. And then another digital. And I think this is like a typing page um, to learn how to type back in the day and some auction tags and these pages are kind of plain that's just something I think from UPS I thought I just would add in there and then this is um from the construction samples this is a little brochure and here is a card that somebody had done and collaged on it so I stuck it in there and then another card with a little quote um and I think that was a bible verse and then here we go. That's the center of that signature. And it's just a little flip out. And again, I had cut. This was um, kind of a bookmark that I had ordered from. Came in a case or a box from Amazon. And I used one part of it on a mixed media piece. So I just put the other there. And here's the other part of that card. Fortune out of fortune cookie. And then again, just some more miscellaneous paper. And this had some kind of um, dent in it or whatever. So... What this is, um, and I, I pulled some of it out here to show you. A while back, I had shown you a video where I had used some molds and I used um, caulk in them. And they are pliable. And it does take a little bit of skill because you don't need it to be um, on top of the mold. It really needs to be fitting in the mold. But it's really, it, it's fun to make. And um, as this is some of it right here. You can see if, if you let it go over the top of the mold, then you have all those little pieces and see there's some in here. So this was probably one of the first pieces I did. And it, it's not a big deal to pull it out of there. You just, you know, got to take your time and go back through it. But this is a fun little thing to do and to add a little bit of dimension. And especially if you do want to do um, a mixed media piece, this definitely will add dimension, as you can see. I mean, it might be an eighth of an inch or so. It's not real thick, but um, definitely will add texture to your pieces. So that's a fun little thing that I have hidden away in there. And then this is just some strips of wallpaper that I put on a card and, um, and, and put a bingo card in there. And then this is me practicing on a sewing machine I got. I had seen people use this pedal, and I was like, well, I can do that. So my pedal was a little small, but fortunately my paper hasn't torn up yet. Um, but anyhow, so this is about to the end of it. And, yep, that's it. So I hope you like the flip through. Um, it's a little longer than anything that I normally do. But I hope I gave you some ideas, and um, you need to try the caulk thing for sure. You, you really do, and you can paint this and color and stuff, and it'll probably take alcohol ink too, but that's a little thing that you need to try. So anyhow, I hope you like my next journal. Um, like I said, it was one that I actually started and finished within two months. That's pretty good for me. Um, may not even quite been two months. A lot's been going on. But anyhow, so I do appreciate it. And if you don't mind, you know, um, subscribe to my channel and click that you like my video. I do put videos up every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. I have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I also am on Pinterest. You can see the things that I like and you might like them too. And um, I guess that's about it. So if nothing else, I will see you down the road and please behave and be safe and I'll catch you later. Bye.